Good to see you here this morning. And as I have quoted Dr. Stephen Keeney in the past, whether you're black or white, rich or poor, gay or straight, Republican or Democrat, trans or cis, or something somewhere in between, we are glad you're here. We are not perfect, but we are more perfect with you than without you. Are there announcements you'd like to share? I have an announcement if I can go. Sure. I just want to give you an update on the work on repairing the bell tower. Um, this is one of the rotten boards I removed that's at the stained glass window, and I'm going to replace it with old growth lumber that's the same size. So you won't be able to tell that it's any different. And because it's old growth lumber, it will last just as long as this old growth lumber church will last. And in case you're interested, I got this at the ReStore on Ridge Road. Ridge House. Ridge House. Where they save building parts that are being taken apart. So it will be a quality repair when it's done. And just a little tidbit more of information. It's kind of a, we're fixing something the builders did when they built this place in 1892 because they cut the opening too big. And the trim boards that they put on went exactly up to the edge of where they cut it. So it was kind of a, a leak made to happen <laughs> in 1892. Well, good job. Um, I have an announcement from the Spenceport United Methodist Church. Um, they're holding a rummage sale on the September 6th and 7th from 9 to 3. There's a poster in the foyer on the bulletin board. And um, so I'm sure they appreciate your patronage. Any other announcements? Then we will begin our worship with bringing in the light of Christ. to join me in our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision, number 451.
uh, page 804. And we'll let Alexander teach us the response that's at the bottom of the page. All right. So I have something to find. We're doing 84, right? Psalm 84. Okay. So I'm going to.
Spirit of God, we confess that we put on airs more often than we put on the armor of God. We are guilty of girding ourselves with lies instead of the truth. We try to protect ourselves with arrogance, superstition, and self-reliance instead of righteousness, faith, and in your gift of salvation. Our footsteps do not follow your path of peace, and we are quick to use your word to attack one another instead of striking out against the sins we personally commit. Forgive us, Holy God. Give us the wisdom and strength to change our ways so that we may live as your faithful ambassadors of the good news. Beloved, God dwells among us. This is good news. Be assured in the blessing of the triune God who created you, redeems you, and sustains you to live and love as neighbors to God and one another. Amen.
Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed that you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be opened night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be here, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place, hear and forgive. Likewise, when foreigners who are not of your people Israel come from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When foreigners come and pray toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do whatever the foreigners ask of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel. And so they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. And then from Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, put on the armor of God. For I know and be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day, and having prevailed against everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and belt your waist with truth, and put on the breastplate of righteousness, and lace up your sandals in preparation for the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak a message, may be given to me to make, to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. And from John 6, 56 to 69, the bread of eternal life. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you wish, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
So I'm grateful that Cindy prepared this entire service, including the message. So I share her wonderful message today. Grateful uh, to be able to. Um, where do you dwell? When I say the word home, what comes to mind? Do you think of your current living space, where you eat your meals and lay your head at night, or where you raised your family? Do you think of your community, as in Spencerport is my home? Do you think of the house and neighborhood where you grew up? This is more likely if that house is still in the family, but all of them are valid definitions of home and evoke certain feelings and memories. Hopefully, they are positive ones that are pleasant and bring a smile to your heart. In today's scripture reading, both in the psalm and first Kings dwelling place is the term used to describe the temple that was planned by David and built by his son Solomon. David moved the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, which necessitated the building of a temple. It was meant for the entire people of Israel, so although the building itself was quite small, the courtyard was quite extensive. Whether your home is large or small, though, it is the inhabitants that matter to God. When you are home, in the place where you live now, what changes in your demeanor? Do you notice what changes in your demeanor? Do you notice when you have been away and return home? I always feel a bit of relief. This is my safe space, my shelter. Lately, it's a good place to get out of the rain. I don't have to think about choosing a parking space, sharing a doorway with another shopper, wearing a raincoat or carrying an umbrella, or in a few months, dealing with snowy roads. I don't have to choose a checkout line or study unit pricing on a store shop to make the best choice. If I have been away for a while, I don't have to ask where the coffee is kept or where I can well, it, I put in coffee. <laughs> 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 it says fill in the blank, so. <laughs> um, or something that you look forward to, not having to look around for it in your home, uh, or where you can get something to eat. Phew, it's a crazy world out there sometimes. In First Kings, the temple, or dwelling place, was a physical place, a structure of wood and stone. In Psalm, words like courts, dwelling place and house give the same indication. But verse 5 says, Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. We can depend on God to give us strength, especially if our hearts are in the right place. What place is that? How do we get there? Dwelling in God's house is not about physical our physical location so much as it is about what is filling our hearts. Our hearts and minds control our actions, so when we, through our spiritual disciplines of reading and studying the scripture, frequent prayer, attending worship, and including acts of service in our routines, we fill our lives with God's spirit. This is one way to crowd out the demands of this noisy world and let God fill us with strength, joy, and peace. The tools that are available to us are laid out in Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Compared to a soldier putting on elements of armor, we can take note of those tools, the truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, prayer, and use them in our efforts to stay in God's dwelling place. However, this is not a one-time deal. This is a daily struggle that we face, day in and day out. Many things can and will take our attention away from Jesus' gift of salvation and how we respond. Remember the end of today's Gospel reading? So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. His generous gift of love is a shining example, a model for us to emulate, to copy. When we do that every day and shut out the noise, we can remain in God's dwelling place, in God's love, and rest assured that nothing can separate us from that love, even death itself. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen.
our very lives be a testament to your glory, shining forth your love and grace to all we encounter. And now it's time to share our joys and concerns. I see we have a couple birthdays this week. Yeah, we have a couple birthdays, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Alexandra tomorrow. Alexandra. And also Liz. Liz is tomorrow too. Yep. And, yeah. That's great, shall we?
she did a, a great job. I'm so grateful for her. Um, who else? Traveling mercies for Erin on Tuesday, uh, a week from tomorrow, but she comes home for a week. So that'll be nice. <laughs> Anything else that we should be praying for? Amy. Uh, prayers for our friends Kathy and Mike Bartnick in Rockport. Kathy Fell is in the hospital um, recovering and they've noticed some memory issues. So um, it's kind of tough on the family. Prayers for Bob, of course. He calls periodically. Um, and it, it, I believe he said the healing process is going well. Also, prayers for Marty. He seems to continue to be doing well. I'll be seeing him this afternoon. Gratitude to Chris um, for all that he does, and stay safe, Chris, because that's, <laughs> that's a lot of high work and great work you're doing, so we appreciate that. Prayers for our church. Um, prayers for the DS, Suzanne, who this leave was extended from August 15th to September 2nd, so it's going to be another couple weeks before we hear from her, I guess, as to what who she might have for us and how often. <laughs> Just it's tough, isn't it? Yeah. But we're sure of anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer. The world situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Something else going on this morning again.
Psalm 347, verse 2.